Protecting threatened species and KBAs will take us a long way towards preventing extinction. But these two levels are not enough. We also need to focus on actions at the landscape and seascape level. Within CI, these broader areas are also referred to as biodiversity conservation corridors. At this scale, we identify targets in several ways. First, we look again at globally threatened species. While most can be protected within one or more KBAs, some need conservation at a larger scale. Why? Because they migrate between sites, have large home ranges, or are found in low numbers throughout a large area. An example is the tiger, which requires a large area for hunting. We map the area needed by these species and look at integrating their conservation requirements with human development needs outside of KBAs. Here, we look at developing land uses compatible with the needs of the species and in some cases at rebuilding connections between KBAs. Second, we consider key ecological processes which include hydrology, pollination, and fire. If these processes are altered or break down, threatened species and KBAs may not persist over time. As an example, think about the frog that lives in and around a lake. The lake itself is found in a valley. Protecting only the lake may not be enough to save the frog since it relies on clean water flowing from the surrounding hills into the lake. If runoff from farms in these hills contain toxic chemicals found in pesticides, the frog may go extinct. Finally, climate change affects all levels of biodiversity. At the site scale, we protect intact forests to keep carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. This is one means of mitigating the extent of climate change. At the landscape scale, we work on mitigation through forest restoration and other activities. We also work on adaptation to the impacts of climate change. For example, we will need to plan for the movement of species to cooler areas. Mm -hmm.